If you've been feeling burned out during the pandemic, you're certainly not alone. Many of us have been primal screaming into pillows in desperate need of a reset. How can we take care of ourselves in the face of such overwhelm? Welcome back to Savvy Psychologist. I'm your host, Dr. Jade Wu. Every week, I'll help you meet life's challenges with evidence-based research, a sympathetic ear, and zero judgment. Today, I'm thrilled to have an expert guest on the show to bust some myths about self-care and give us, especially those of us who are parents, some down-to-earth, compassionate advice. Not too long ago, I was emptying my lungs into a primal scream into my pillow. It was the middle of a Wednesday, and I was once again working while also taking care of my toddler because daycare was closed. I was covered in sweat and whatever those greasy little hands that put in my hair. Nobody has slept well in days. There were tantrums erupting every hour. I had a pounding headache, and there was a work deadline coming up, and I could not hear myself think. I could barely remember my own name. Screaming into the pillow seemed like the only viable option. Now, I'm not the only one burning out 16 months into a pandemic. People are feeling pent up, overloaded, lonely, stifled. And even with vaccines and society opening up, in the United States at least, the collective stress of the pandemic continues to weigh heavily. And things are even worse in some parts of the world. No wonder there have been headlines like, the agony of pandemic parenting, and I cry on Tuesdays and Fridays. There's even a hotline you can call that will let you scream into the void if you need something a little more interactive than a pillow. So now more than ever, it seems that parents and everyone else need to practice self-care. Now, what exactly does this mean? How do I add one more thing to the to-do list when I'm already swamped? To find out, I talked to an expert. Dr. Nanika Kaur is a clinical psychologist and respectful parenting therapist based in Brooklyn, New York. In her private practice, she offers therapy to parents whose childhood experiences are intruding on their relationship with their children and who want to do better as parents and as people. Her work centers around processing, healing from, and breaking intergenerational cycles of painful relationships in the service of shifting to a more respectful, collaborative, and empathy-based approach. She is also the host of the new Project Parenthood podcast from the Quick and Dirty Tips Network. Now, we at QDT are thrilled to have her join the team. And if you want to read her full bio or learn more about her work, check out the show notes for links to her work. Now, today, I asked her to share her wisdom with a focus on how parents can take care of themselves, especially now. Her tips are down-to-earth and applicable to everyone, including non-parents. So, without further ado, here was my conversation with Dr. Kaur. So, Dr. Kaur, I have heard from many parents in the past year and a half who are just at the end of their rope. They're so burnt out. What have you been hearing from parents and, you know, how have parents that you've been seeing been coping? It's been a roller coaster out there. Um, Parents have gone from confusion and fear to hunkering down and trying to be safe. And there was a long period of melancholy and sameness and irritability, listlessness, all of that. And then things started to get hopeful again, you know, and now people are sort of coming out of the woodwork and people are feeling a little bit more hopeful with the vaccines happening. Um, but a lot of people had some trouble with be, with all the sameness and the staying home. And, you know, some people were really interested in spending so much more time with their family. And some people were, you know, needed a lot of space from their family. And so it's sort of up and down. But I've been sort of trying to encourage people, encourage parents in, in specifically, to um, take time, even just five or 10 minutes, just to take a moment to, you know, sit down and have a whole cup of tea. Just even just that is a a self-caring thing to do, you know, holding your boundaries, just taking a moment to breathe. Any of that can be helpful. A whole cup of tea sounds really nice. I love that idea. Mm-hmm. Without <laughs> and, getting up. That's the important thing. Without getting up, like <laughs> beginning to part. end. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so you mentioned in there this concept of self-caring or self-care. Now that's a term we've been hearing about a lot, not just for parents, but for everybody. So what exactly does self-care mean to you? And are there myths about self-care that you would like to debunk or talk about? Well, 
first of all, self-care doesn't always have to cost money and it doesn't always involve a bubble bath, though, though it can. That's no, There's nothing wrong with that, right? But, you know, it's really about being authentic. You know, uh, what do you need to put in place so you can really do what feels good to you? And with parenting, it's really focusing on collaboration over control really is a self-caring thing to, t- thing to do because there'll be less conflict in your relationship. It'll be more peaceful in your home when you are coming from a more collaborative place. Um, holding your boundaries, setting limits, taking short breaks when, you, breaks when you need to recharge, or speaking to yourself kindly instead of critically, being mindful, practicing radical acceptance, which I know you've talked about, Yes. Um, prioritizing connection in your life. All of that is self-care. Putting a lock on your door, that's self-care. That's like, Ooh. you know what I mean? Like all of those things are self-caring things, you know? Yeah, that's really powerful to hear because I think lately in the past few years, I've really seen self-care take a turn for the consumerist kind of perspective where a lot of products are uh, marketed as self-care products. But you're saying that self-care is anything that (laughs) gives you a peace of mind or makes you feel better or grounded or like yourself. Something that prioritizes your well-being, which is not always something that costs money, right? Right. Sometimes it's just having a conversation with somebody you love, right? Like prioritizing that, you know, maybe that's something you want to do once a week, like clockwork, you know, speak to someone that you're really connected to. I love that idea. And one interesting, other interesting idea you mentioned in there was collaboration versus control. And then also the idea of setting boundaries. So how do we find that balance between collaborating and working in harmony with other people in our household, but also having boundaries at the same time? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's a lot about, well, your own personal boundaries and limits holding the, the limits you have. I mean, I'm thinking of things like when people have toddlers and you know, your toddler wants to climb all over you. And sometimes you're in the mood for that. And sometimes you're not in the mood for that. But I mean, setting a boundary and saying, you know, I'm not the jungle gym right now. Like, (laughs) that's not going to happen. I mean, even that is a self-caring thing to do, even though your child might be upset, right? Your child may not like that. I, But I really want to be snuggly. And I really want to like attach myself to your body in all these ways. And, you know, well, my body is mine. And I'm setting a limit on that right now. And I'm good. I can hold the space for your upset. And we can think of other ways for you to get connection from me that work for both of us. So that's where the co- collaboration comes in, right? Gotcha. So, you know, maybe I'm not interested in doing this thing that you want to do. I'm going to set a limit there. But, you know, I want to help you get your needs met. So let's talk about what else we can do that works for both of us for you to get this need met. I like that. Getting creative so that you get to set your boundaries and also you get to collaborate. I like that. Okay. So all this talk about self-care, you know, why is it? important for people and perhaps particularly for parents? How does it affect parents' mental health or how does it affect their parenting? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you can't pour from an empty cup. You know, if we're not taking care of ourselves as parents, if we're burnt out, if we feel unheard, unseen, uncared for, unacknowledged even ourselves, you know, we give ourselves a hard time for not being the parents we hope to be, which makes us feel worse. And then we parent from that place of feeling terrible about ourselves. And, you know, the better we feel emotionally and interpersonally, the better we're going to do as parents. So prioritizing the things in our lives that provide healing, that, you know, well-being and that connection are going to really set us up to do that. I think what you just said is going to strike such a chord with so many parents listening right now. And it certainly strikes a chord with me because what you're saying is bringing up a lot of this idea of mom guilt, parent guilt, this constant feeling of, am I doing enough? Am I prioritizing my kid enough? Or conversely, am I prioritizing my work enough or my self-care or something else? Sometimes it feels like parenting can be a zero-sum game. Like the more you give to your child, the less you have for yourself or vice versa, What do you think about that idea? Well, I mean, the kind of parenting that I encourage really is about these win-win solutions, right? Mm -hmm. So that, you know, it's not, the scale isn't tipped all the way to one side or the other. The idea is that parents' needs get met and children's needs get met. So nobody feels so depleted all the time, right? And for some of us, working is a part of what makes us feel whole and what makes us feel good about ourselves that that we can then bring to our parenting selves, you know? And so prioritizing that sometimes is actually good for our children if we're going to show up in happier and more fulfilled ways. So it sounds like there are a few things I'm gathering from what you're saying right now, which is like, 
flexibility, balance, um, collaboration. Are there any other sort of overarching principles that we can take away for better parenting and better self-care? Well, the top ones that I always talk about are radical acceptance, really accepting reality for what it is. Um, You know, suffering is optional, right? We don't have to suffer around things. Um, We can accept what's going on instead of trying to resist it. Yeah, say more about that. What do you mean by suffering is optional and resisting reality? What do you mean by that? You know, I'm I'm actually going to talk about this on a future episode, but I'm thinking of the idea that, you know, sometimes we, something is happening that we really wish weren't happening. And then we begin to talk to ourselves about how much we dislike that it's happening. And then we start responding our, you know, our emotions, our nervous system gets really behind all of those thoughts of this is the worst. This is horrible. I can't believe this is happening. And we get really worked up because of those thoughts rather than, you know, hey, like, we just really holding space for ourselves. This is happening. I wish it weren't happening, but it is. It's like, what are we going to do about it? That re- really takes out a lot of the, the suffering, the upset that comes up around things that we wish were not happening. We're just, those things are going to happen all the time, especially when we're dealing with parenting, right? Many things are going to happen we wish weren't happening. And if we can just sort of lean into it instead of away from it, it sort of makes it much easier. We're going with the current instead of against it. Yes, I really like that idea. And it occurs to me that for those of us, which I think I kind of belong in this category, for those of us who are kind of more type A and more micromanaging of our lives and more of the mindset that if I just put more effort into this, if I just work harder, it'll get better. When you parent, there's so much that's not within our control and so much uncertainty and so much that we don't even know that we don't know. So it seems like that previous mindset that I had and and parenting just really are clashing in these moments. And then we end up suffering and struggling and all of that. Yeah, so interesting. So leaning into whatever it is that is happening, that is reality that you don't like, instead of struggling against it and making it 10 times more (laughs) of an issue. Right, exactly. And, you know, if you can lean into it and and stay calm, you know, we have more access to finding solutions to whatever problem is going on. We have more access to things that we've, you know, our creativity and, and trying to get through these difficult things. Right. Because it's very hard to be creative when your mind is just spinning with how much you hate the situation right now. (laughs) Okay. So what are your other favorite tips for parents trying to to enact self-care in this day and age? I know things are starting to get better a little bit, but there's still so much uncertainty and so much recovery from trauma that everyone is collectively dealing with. Many people are still out of work. So what are your favorite tips for people parents especially, to cope? Well, this sort of goes along with what we were just saying, that the sort of being able to get our nervous systems to calm down a little bit is really such a good go-to. It doesn't cost any money. You have access to it all the time. Just exhaling, right? Taking a really extended exhale really helps our nervous system calm down. It really is the antidote to our fight or flight system. So it really, you know, if we have a, a a lot of time to take a really, really long exhale, then then we must not be, you know, running from a saber-toothed tiger, right? We must be, there, there must be safety around us somewhere. And so we really trick our autonomic nervous system into just settling down. If we just are able to sort of double, I like to say sort of double your exhale, so an inhale for four counts and an exhale for eight counts and really try to fill your belly up and really exhale all, almost like you're wringing out your lungs, like exhaling it all out, Really, if you could do that three times, like it really settles you and really, again, gives you access to, you know, your prefrontal cortex where all of like your good ideas are, your good decision making, all the decisions you'd make if you were just, you know, in a great mood all the time. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that sounds lovely. (laughs) All your decision making is up there that we just don't have access to it when we're in that fight, flight, freeze state. And that really is somewhere, you know, when you're talking about people who've lost jobs and people who've been parenting nonstop 24-7 for the last year and a half, you know, um, sometimes just taking a breath can really put you in a much better space for like the next, help you get through the next few minutes of your life. That sounds great because sometimes it really is just one step at a time. If we can get through this moment, we can get through the next moment and so on and so forth. So what happens when we 
make a mistake as a parent, when we lose our temper, when we do the thing that we weren't supposed to do, we were supposed to stick to the schedule and we didn't or vice versa. So what happens when we mess up like that as parents and then feel terrible about it? Yeah. I mean, first of all, I think the first step, you know, in any kind of mistake that we make um, in our lives is just to be self-compassionate, just to speak to ourselves kindly. Everybody makes mistakes. We're just human people. We're going to be fallible. We're just not perfect. And we're going to make mistakes. We're going to make mistakes with our children. And that's okay. If we can go back to them, we can we can forgive ourselves, go to our children, repair with them, reconnect with them, take responsibility for what we've done, say what we wished we would have done um, and what we plan to do in the future. And again, that collaboration, what can we do together that maybe helps us not end up in this place again? You know, what can I do differently? What can you do differently? What, what might we do differently together as a team? But that repairing is really important. It's really not about the lack of conflict in your relationship with your child. It's about, you know, the presence or absence of repair and children who whose parents make it a point to intentionally repair with them when there's been conflicts, no matter who's caused it, whether it's the child or the parent, um, to really, you know, intentionally come back and, um, you know, really like parent initiated repair can really, really help kids feel more resilient and be more forgiving of their own mistakes when they make them and really opens the lines of communication as certainly as children get older coming toward teen years when really that they need to feel that they can bring their mistakes to you right and when you're showing them this is what it looks like to bring a mistake and just take responsibility for it forgive yourself own up to it and move forward without anyone having to feel guilty or bad about themselves. You know, we're all going to make mistakes. We can forgive each other. We can learn from it. We can move on. That sounds like such powerful role modeling and really setting up the child for having healthy relationships with themselves and with other people in the future too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's really what it's about. If we can sort of model what we want you know, who we want our children to be, how we want them to behave in the world, then we don't need to use as much control, right? We're showing them this is how this is how we want you to be. I don't have to force you into it. I'm treating you this way every day. I'm showing you these things all the time. Certainly I'm saying all the time, which of course is not 100% of the time. <laughs> sure. Not 100% of the time. Uh -huh. But, you know, as as much as I can, I'm, I'm, my intention is to model the way I want you to be in the world. Mm. And, um, and therefore I used to, I, don't need to use as much control because children are always going to do really what they see us doing, not so much what we say to do. They'll mm. just really model us. Yeah. And it occurs to me, just thinking back on the children that I've known, is that the younger the child, the more forgiving they are by nature, right? Absolutely. Is that true? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it, I mean, really, even when I speak to my adult clients um, who have issues with their, you know, their parents, adult children and parents, you know, even adults will talk about the fact that even if their parent came to them years and years later, now that they're an adult to apologize for something that happened in their teen years, it would still mean a lot. Just oh, being powerful. acknowledged at any time. It's, so there's, it's really never too late to repair, right? It's never too late to take responsibility for something that you've done that you wish you hadn't. That is really powerful. And Dr. Kaur, thank you so much for these just amazing insights and um, really helpful tips. Any last parting wisdom to our listeners who are parents or have parents uh, and people who may be having a hard time in general? Yeah, I mean, I just, you know, want to send the message out to your listeners who are parents or caregivers or anyone who plays a significant role in, in a child's life that, you know, we're just all doing the best we can in any given moment. And we all want the best for our kids, but we can know all of the science and all of the parenting advice and have all the best plans. And we're still going to fall short of that. There's no such thing as perfect parenting. I want to encourage us just to be intentional and mindful about parenting and to hold self-compassion front and center. And, you know, we'll be talking all about that and a lot more on Project Parenthood. And so I hope everyone comes to join us. Yes, I'm so excited for Project Parenthood. I'm definitely going to be tuning in. I already know it's going to be so 
helpful and reassuring. Like I already feel a little lighter just having talked to you about parenting and imperfection and forgiveness and all of that. So yeah, I'll be tuning in for sure. I'm excited. Well, thank you, Dr. Kaur, so much for joining us. Uh, this uh, is the beginning of a wonderful partnership between our podcasts, and I'm excited to tune into your show. Please come back anytime, and I wish you all of the best with starting this new show. Thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited to get started. Thank you again so much to Dr. Nanika Kaur. She was such a wonderful guest, and I'm so excited to listen to her podcast, Project Parenthood. So to hear more from her, you can follow Project Parenthood on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you have a question you'd like her to answer, you can email Dr. Kaur at parenthood at quickanddirtytips.com. That's parenthood at quickanddirtytips.com. You can also leave her a message at 646-926-3243. Be sure to let her know if it's okay to use your voice on the show. And to find out more about Dr. Kaur's work in general, go to www.brooklynparenttherapy.com. And on Instagram, you can follow her at bkparents. Thank you so much again for listening. Now let's continue the conversation on social media. Let me know how you're doing with burnout, how you're doing with self-care. I'm on Facebook and Twitter at QDT Savvy Psych. And you can also keep in touch through the Savvy Psychologist newsletter. Savvy Psychologist is audio engineered by Steve Rickyberg and edited by Beata Santora. As always, Savvy Psychologist is strictly for informational purposes and does not substitute for mental health care from a licensed professional. Thank you again for joining me, and I'll see you next week for a happier, healthier mind. Bye.